listening to the Horror Shots Podcast. Hello again and welcome to another Horror Shots Podcast with me, Casey. As usual, this podcast is brought to you by the wonderful people over at morbidlybeautiful.com. Go check them out for everything you need to know about horror in the pop culture realm. Tons of great reviews, interviews, retrospectives, top ten lists, anything you want, they have it. Go check them out right now. That's morbidlybeautiful.com. As per usual, before the podcast gets started, I do have to get some housekeeping out of the way. The contest is still open. That contest being, if you leave a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or One of those two, you are entered into a draw to win some pretty sweet merch. By sweet merch, I mean a t-shirt or a photography print, whatever you want. It's up to you. I'll send it your way. So if you do end up leaving a review, please send me an email at horrorshotspodcast at gmail.com so I can get your information. Because without that information, I can't really send you much. But the contest is going to run until the end of September. So whatever day that is in September, the day that the podcast comes out on, is the last day you have to enter. The following week, I will read out the winner. That's pretty much about it. I still have the YouTube channel and the Twitch channel going as well. So if you want to find me on YouTube, just got to search some Horror Shots or Horror Shots Plays. And same on Twitch, it's Horror Shots Plays. Or even Mixer, if that's more your kind of thing. Uh, That's just Horror Shots. So check me out on there. Any follows and subscribes and all that kind of fun stuff helps. And it's really enjoyable for me to give you more content. But speaking of content... The whole reason you're listening is to hear about some eschatology. Now, what's eschatology, you may ask? Well, it's more or less the theories behind the principles that are ending the world. Pretty much every religion or culture in the known world has their own end time. Everything from Y2K to the Mayan calendar ending, anything along those lines counts as the end of the world or a theory that kind of guides us to the end of the world. Now, the word arises from the Greek eschatos, meaning last, and logi, meaning the study of, so the last study. And it first appeared in the English language around 1844. The Oxford Dictionary defines eschatology as the part of theology concerned with death, judgment, and the final destination of souls and of humankind. In the context of mysticism, the term refers metaphorically to the end of ordinary reality and potentially a reunion with some sort of divine being. Religions treat eschatology as a future event prophesized and theorized in sacred texts or in folklore. Modern eschatology and apocalypticism, both religious and secular, involve violent disruptions or destruction of the world, whereas Christian and Jewish eschatologies view the end times as a consummation or perfection of God's creation of the world, albeit with violent overtures, such as the Great Tribulation. For example, according to some ancient Hebrew worldviews, reality unfolds along a linear path, or rather a spiral path, with a cyclical component that nonetheless have linear trajectories. The world began with God and is ultimately headed towards God's final goal for creation the world to come to an end. So in terms of the religions that really believe in this sort of stuff, we have to start with Christianity. Now the Christian eschatology is a major branch of study within Christian theology dealing with the last things. Broadly speaking, Christian eschatology is the study concerned with the ultimate destiny of the individual soul and the entire created order based primarily upon biblical texts within the Old and New Testaments. Christian eschatology looks to study and discuss matters such as death and the afterlife, heaven and hell, and the second coming of Jesus, as well as the resurrection of the dead, the rapture, the tribulation, millennialism, the end of the world, and the last judgment, and not to mention the new heaven and new earth in the world to come. Eschatological passages are found in many places in the Bible, both in the Old and New Testament. There are also many extra-biblical examples of eschatological prophecies, as well as church traditions. I think it's safe to say that the Christian belief has two more of the popular theories of the end times, the first being the rapture. Now, the rapture is 
a term used by certain Christians, particularly within branches of North American evangelicalism, referring to an end-time event where all Christian believers, living and dead, will rise into heaven to join Christ. Some adherents believe that this event is predicted and described in Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians in the Bible, where he uses the Greek meaning to snatch away or seize. Though it has been used differently in the past, the term is now often used by certain believers to distinguish this particular event from the second coming of Christ to earth mentioned in 2 Thessalonians, Gospel of Matthew, 1 Corinthians, and Revelations, usually viewing it as preceding to the second coming and followed by a thousand-year millennial kingdom. Adherents of this perspective are sometimes referred to as premillennialist dispensationalists, but among them there are differing viewpoints about the exact timing of the event. The term rapture is especially useful in discussing or disputing the exact timing or the scope of the event, particularly when asserting the pre-tribulation view that the rapture will occur before, not during, the second coming, or without an extended tribulation period. The term is most frequently used among Christian theologians and fundamentalist Christians in the United States. Other older uses of rapture were simply used as a term for any mystical union with God, or for eternal life in heaven with God. There are differing views among Christians regarding the timing of Christ's return, such as whether it will occur in one event or two, and the meaning of the aerial gathering described in 1 Thessalonians 4. Many Christians do not subscribe to the rapture-oriented theological views, though the term rapture is derived from the texts of the Latin Vulgate of 1 Thessalonians 4.17, quote, we will be caught up, unquote. Catholics as well as Eastern Orthodox Lutherans and most Reformed Christians do not generally use rapture as a specific theological term, nor do any of these bodies subscribe to the premillennialist dispensationalist theological view associated with its use, but do believe in the phenomenon, primarily in the sense of the elect gathering with Christ in heaven after his second coming. These denominations do not believe that a group of people is left behind on earth for an extended tribulation period after the events of 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Pre-tribulation rapture theory originated in the 18th century with the Puritan preachers Increase and Cotton Mather, and was popularized extensively in the 1830s by John Nelson Darby and the Plymouth Brethren, and further in the United States by the wide circulation of the Schofield Reference Bible in the early 20th century. Some, including Grant Jeffrey, maintain that the earlier document called Ephraim, or Pseudo-Ephraim, already supported a pre-tribulation rapture. But what about the second coming? Well, I'm not going to go into super detail on that, as it's not as kind of riveting as the rapture, but I'll go over some of the signs. Now, the Bible states, quote, Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Many, but not all, Christians believe in a few other signs. 1. The coming of Christ will be instantaneous and worldwide. Quote, for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. 2. The coming of Christ will be visible to all. Quote, then the signs of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's from Matthew 24.30. The previous one was 24.27. 3. The coming of Christ will be audible, quote, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's Matthew 24, 31. 4. The resurrection of the righteous will occur, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, as from 1 Thessalonians 4.16. 
And the last one here, in one single event, the saved who are alive at Christ's coming will be caught up together with the resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. Quote, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And that is from 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. So as you can see, the Christian belief of the end time for the most part, the most popular ones anyway, in North America, I should state that in North America, do kind of revolve around Christ's return and some sort of judgment and tribulation and rapture. It's plain and simple. Now, unfortunately, I do have to call this an episode. I didn't want to have to do it this short, but I kind of ran out of time this week, which is really unfortunate because it's such a great and vast topic, which is why I'm going to have to split it into two parts. I know you love the two-parters. The dragon two-parter that I did a couple of weeks ago really went over well, so I really hope that uh, you come back and listen to part two where I'll be covering things such as Ragnarok and the Buddhist theories on the end times, as well as what the Hindus believe happens when everything decides to come to an end. So if you like what you heard, absolutely leave a review. After all, you can win some pretty cool stuff if you decide to leave said review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. I will be back next week with part two, and who knows, maybe I'll have some more surprises along the way. I can't guarantee anything, but if you do want more Horror Shots content, check out the YouTube channel or Twitch or Mixer. That'd be twitch.tv slash horrorshotsplays or mixer.com slash horrorshots. So, until next week.